All right, welcome to another episode of For Footballers Only. I'm Mike. I'm James Pinay. And today we have a special guest. Nate Weiss. Welcome, Nate. Welcome, Nate. Welcome, welcome. to the show, Nate. Yes, yes. All right, me. Nate. Um, let's get right into it. Where does your football story begin? Um, yeah, man, I, I grew up in the United States in South Florida, uh, playing, playing with uh, – with Jamaicans, with uh, Brazilians, with every South American you can think of. Um, and uh, I, w I, I always knew I was a good player, but I knew I wasn't going to be good enough where I was going to be able to make a, a, a ton of money as a player. And uh, pretty early on, I found the, the, the coaching um, the coaching influence and I wanted to get involved in coaching. I was around like 14, 15 years old when I started working at soccer camps. Um, and, uh, and yeah, yeah. Um, just been involved in football ever since as a player and has played professionally a little bit in Europe for, for six or seven years and uh, always did coaching on the side. And uh, since about eight or nine years, I've been just doing coaching only full-time. Yeah. So, so to go back, Nate, uh, I just want to know, well, who introduced you to football? Was it somebody in your family or what is it? Who introduced you to football? Man, growing up in South Florida, it's just a culture kind of thing, man. I mean, like uh, – like I, I grew up with with uh, straight up with, with 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 Jamaicans, with Haitians, with Brazilians, with with with, uh, with Argentinians. It was just like going to school. It was a part of our culture, just um, just football and everything like that. And uh, I grew up right next to a field. Spent all my time there at a field. I couldn't really even say what um, what was the reason why I started playing football. It's the same when when somebody asks you guys why you guys got why you, why you guys got involved in football, you can't even explain it. It just found you. Yeah, that's fair. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so this is at like, um, like I mean, you know, four or five. As, as soon as it, so, I'm I'm taking it. A lot of this is just pickup, right? Like, so yeah. you just go and just playing pickup, and then eventually you transition into a more club structure. Yeah, yeah I was in club structure, and then um, what, what's interesting is that I I was around twelve years old, uh, mm -hmm. when I met um my mentor who who basically like guided me on a, a, everything that I'm still doing now. Uh, he was like the the technical coach for uh, Manchester United for a bunch of years, came to Florida to retire um, and basically just started training me. And I was like fascinated with how, he, how he made me technically good. And then, and he improved me as a player and I saw he was improving other players. And then during the, um, during the time we were working together, he would have me like demonstrate for, for other players that he was training. And it just kind of like developed into um, uh, one of these things I just fell in love with, um, the aspect of, of coaching, but not really like tactical coaching, more just like making players better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so then, um, so this is say this is during your teenage years, 12, 13, 14, 15. Then at, yeah. at what point did you transition to, uh, to go play in Europe? Um, so I was uh, playing for a team in uh, Weston in, in South Florida. We were a pretty good team. Uh, what's interesting is every single player that was in my team got a college scholarship, every single kid. Mm -hmm. um, and I went to uh, NC State for two years, mm -hmm. um, played there. And then, um, it, like I said, it was one of these things that I had these goals and all these things that I wanted to accomplish and what I wanted to do. And you just feel like you're um, – yeah, I was just feel like I was just wasting time there because it was one of these things. Like, I know what I want to do. I have this thing that's calling me, and I and like, you know, like, you, what do we call it? It was like what destiny or something. Like it's just calling me. I'm just like, whoa. I'm just sitting here in college, you know, like going to classes, playing games. It's good. Everything's going great. But I just, you know, like, and then just just had it. I felt like something was missing. And yeah. um, then one of my one of my friends that I grew up with. Um, went over to Spain to to try out for some teams and stuff like that. He asked me if I wanted to come over just to visit him. I went over there, um, went on trial with a with a um, third division team, which is like the farmer club from uh, from RCD Mallorca, mm -hmm. and um, I ended up liking it. And they wanted me to stay, and I and then I just ended up staying. And I dropped out of uh, out of NC State, and uh, that was pretty much it. And then I just basically. Um, I liked it so much and I was, I was playing and um, uh, they have like a youth program there. And I was like, Hey, can I work also with the youth kids? Cause I didn't really have anything else to do during the day. And um, so I started working with the youth kids and I was like, Hey man, I'm going to use my playing ability to try to see as many countries as I possibly can. Um, because I always knew I wanted to go into coaching and I wanted to go into um, working with players and stuff like that. So, um, so yeah, man, for seven years, 
um, just playing. And whenever I had like the opportunity to go somewhere else, I took it. And for seven years, I went to seven different countries. Every team that I played for I had in the contract that uh, I was also going to be um, be one of like the youth coaches, but like helping out or something, some aspect. Um, so yeah, just, I did that for seven years. And um, so I, that's why I said like, I, I've been coaching for a really long time, but I was also playing as yeah. I was doing it. And then when I came to Germany, it was this, this decision, do I want to go to um, Holland or to Germany? Because that's where they have the best coaching and the best uh, football background. And uh, I had a friend who was um, working here in Germany, and um, I asked him if I can uh, come over. And, uh, yeah, then I've just been here ever since, and that was in 2013. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll come back to the, the Germany, to where you are yeah. now, but let's, let's go back to South Florida. So at uh, 13, when you meet your mentor, who – Prior or even during that time, who were your football idols? Man, uh, de uh, de definitely Diego Maradona. Definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. I used to have like the VHS tapes of Diego Maradona and um, I watch them all the time. Diego Maradona, George Best, uh, Eric Cantona. What's funny is that like, um, man, my, 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 my parents and my family, they didn't even mean to do it, but like, because uh, they didn't really know that much about soccer. So they would just like whatever, and whenever anything said soccer on it, they would just buy it for me, like like books and, and VHS and stuff like that. Not I want to say like I'm spoiled, but they knew I was like in love with soccer. So it was just like one of these things. Yeah, yeah. oh, I saw, I saw a VHS and it said soccer on it. So here, so happy birthday, you know. And uh, and one of the VHS tapes that I had, I still remember to this day, was um, from the '98 World Cup when Marcelo Bielsa was coach of uh from Argentina. Yeah. And they, it was just like Mar Marcelo Bielsa training the Argentina national team. And I, I watched it maybe like, honestly, like 50, 60 times. And it was, I, and, and I didn't even know who Marcelo Bielsa was, man. I'm like a little kid, you know what I'm saying? And I was, this guy just uh, the, the entire time training the players like, hey, so, hey, so, hey, so. Uh, and, and it was one of these things that I was just like, man, that's cool. I would like to do that and stuff. And, and, and that's what really like formed me when I was, um, Mm -hmm. when I was like, like, I didn't know anything about coaching. You know what I'm saying? Like, w w how old am I? What, what am I like? Like 10, 11, 12, like that, you know, I'm still playing and everything. I didn't know anything about like a four, four, two or any of that stuff. And I just saw like this guy from Argentina named uh, Marcelo Bielsa training his players. And he start, and he was doing like, like group and individual training back then, man. And he made mm -hmm. it famous and he was basically like taking out like, like little aspects of his, of his, of the game and putting it out. And the crazy thing is, is that like, yeah, I was sitting in, in I rem I remember it like it like it was like it was yesterday. I was, I was in ninth grade. I'm sitting in class. It was a uh, science class, and I had a little notebook and I was just like writing down training stuff that 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 Marcelo Bielsa was doing. I, I was crazy about football, man. I was just, <laughs> but but it wasn't like I was like a like a like a nerd. I just wanted to be a coach. I was playing. I was coaching. I was doing everything. Yeah. And uh, it's funny we're talking about like destiny, how it works out. Like I didn't even know who Marcelo Bielsa was. I didn't know like what what periodization is and everything like that but i was just learning about it because my parents just uh, just just randomly bought me a vhs and and i had like um and i remember my brother bought me dutch soccer drills which was like with edgar davids on the front wearing yeah. uh, with, with the ajax jersey <laughs> it was way way back in the day man and i would just go through that book and like because anything was better than 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 paying attention in class right <laughs> so i was just like going through that book and and just de developing exercises and I'm a player, man, but I was just developing passing exercises because it was fun for some reason. You know, do you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, it yeah. was just like manifest destiny. Like, like I, like I, I, I always wanted to play, but I was like, I was literally like just making up passing exercises in science class in ninth grade. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, man. Yeah. I, I, I never really told anybody about that story. To be honest. <laughs> no, 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 that's, that's dope. dope. That's, that's dope. Point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, Oh, uh, I have so bit, so much to ask you about that, but I want to go yeah. somewhere first before we even get back to that. But I'm I'm gonna come back to that though. Yeah. About, like your um, so you know Maradona is you know your your football idol, but then you you know you start learning more about the game. Obviously, you get the Agadabi's yeah. tape, and you know you start seeing all this stuff. So then um, I'm gonna ask you this question, and just to let you know, there's no right answer. Well, I mean, you actually because you know. Because you, it looks like you've been studying, so you may, you may, in your mind, have a right, a right have the right answer. I, everybody is all personal, right? Yeah. But there's no wrong answer. But no matter what you say, people who know about football will have 
comments to say about what you said. So the yeah. question is, who is in your top 11 footballers of all time? Oh. <laughs> wait, wait, you want to go from like, from like uh, position-wise? No, you know, no, it's up to you. You could do, you could do all, ten, all 11 strikers. You could do all 11 goalies. I mean, or you could do position. Like some folks do positions. Man, that's a difficult question. That's going to take a long time. Can we, can we, can we go to that at the end? Because like let me get like a little bit more like deep content for that. So, so you wanna you wanna think I mean, about I can it? I keep them off just on the top of the head, but it's not gonna be anything that I really I can put into thought. Okay. You know, like uh, I mean, uh, but I can uh, look number one for me. Uh, okay, you can't say number one, but like one and two: Diego Maradona, Pele, uh, uh-huh. Eric Cantona, Zidane, uh, Messi, Ronaldo, Ronaldo. Uh, <laughs> And then, and then we're just gonna go into like personal stuff, man. Like, like for me, I, I grew up and I loved Edgar Davids, so I gotta say Edgar Davids, um, George Weah, oh, uh, <laughs> um, Garincha. Okay, one more. This one more. Zico. Zico. Wow. Okay. So I just want to know, like, what those players? Or what, what what position did you play? I just man, I was I was I was a right back, man. Just basically, what? just just like like. That, that that was one of the things when I was when I was growing up I was never right back but when I got into like college and I got into like going to going to Europe I was always right back because it's one of these things like you don't need that much ability you just need to like understand where you're supposed to be Position. and uh, I wasn't very quick mm-hmm. and but like you know as a right defender you just gotta get up a little bit you gotta be fit you gotta put in some crosses and stuff like that so it's a very I wouldn't say it's an easy position. Mm-hmm. Um, no position is easy because then everybody's going to get offended if you say, yo, I'm right back and you say it's an easy position. Yeah. But it's it, one of the positions where, like, you have to have – is don't have to have that much creativity and you don't have to be a genius because one of these things, like, you can train as much as you want, but if you, you just either have this genius ability or you don't. And I never had the genius ability – Mm-hmm. Um, to like to see the pass and to just turn with two players on my back, or just you know, to 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 change the angle of the ball without even touching the ball it wasn't wasn't me. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. So you you played right back. But, uh, I'm trying to think. You yeah. didn't name you didn't name anyone in. No man, because I'm not. I'm, no, nobody's proud to be like, hey man, I've got. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like. <laughs> It's not one of these things where it's like, oh man, I'm all my back. So Glenn Johnson was my idol. Uh, Gary Neville, Gary Neville. Oh man, you know what I'm saying? Like who, nobody. No, no, nobody no, 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 okay, okay. no I, you're right. You're right. But, want to be a right back. You want to, no, be, you want to be like like a striker, score goals, and then you realize you're not quick enough, you're not fast enough, so they put you at, at another position. No, but you had like uh, Kafu. You could you could Kafu or um... yeah, but Kafu was a genius, man. Like, right? And, and even I get it. I get his point. Even if I wanted Kafu was like my idol, I'm never gonna play like Kafu, man. <laughs> so mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Man. Yeah, no, no. I know, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm saying your top eleven. You didn't name, you know, like you had a bunch of, like all. Oh. Nobody wants to hear about like. Okay, I could have said like, yeah, uh, Franz Beckenbauer or something like that, you know. But that's a I'm baller. Like, like an attack, I like attacking football. I like players that are exciting. Yeah. Um, there's really, really, really good uh, defenders. But honestly, the players that I named they're just exciting to watch. And no, no, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. But you, you didn't even put you, you didn't put Ronaldinho on your list as well. Oh wow! Dude, see, I told you, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's your fault because you just wanted me to go off the top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, you know, I'm sure people are gonna idea. get at you. <laughs> how about we, how about we substitute Zico for Ronaldo? Because, uh, <laughs> for Ronaldinho? No, you already had both. Yeah, uh, you got both Ronaldo. Ronaldo. Yeah, you have both Ronaldo. Yeah, you got. I, you gotta have both Ronaldos, man. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, no, no, that's true. Uh, I mean, it's still a top list, though. No, I mean, yeah, that, that's a that's iconic. That that list is iconic. First of all, you you one of the few people we you know been doing this for a while. You one of the few people that named David, and I and I tell everybody that it's it, if you're gonna have like this guy, you know, people would not name David, and then there was they would say uh, Sen or uh, Yaya Torre, or you know, all these, yeah. and I'm like, this yeah. guy transcended. Exactly. All, like you, like if you have to study the game, like David. I, 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 what, what year were you born? Who me? Yeah. Eighty one. Like so, we're we're eighties, eighties, seventy nine. I'm born in eighty seven. 
Mm-hmm. I remember when when Davids Davids was for me like like I said I I had this 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 Ajax uh, training drills book where Davids was on the cover, and I always knew this guy like I I liked him before he even had sunglasses. But then like <laughs> I remember that the, that Nike came out like he was the first street baller. Yes. You know what I mean like like and and he he it, it was just exciting to watch him and it was exciting to see everything that he was doing and to like he was the first guy to come out and like do tricks and stuff like that yeah and then not only did he do tricks but he was like a bulldog in the midfield yeah you know because it, it, it yeah. was one of those things before davids if somebody was doing like freestyle stuff it's like oh he's just a freestyler you can't yeah. Do yeah but davids came out doing some crazy stuff on commercials and stuff like that like he, I remember. Do you remember the, the 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 commercial where it was the players playing against yes. like the ninjas and they got a yeah, 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 yeah. He goes and catch the ball behind the back. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. And, and I remember like da- it started out like Davids was like like sprinting onto this thing and like slide tackling. Mm-hmm. And the yeah. Out. And then he like and I was just like, what the hell is that? <laughs> but you, you know what's crazy is like like we I mean like you I'm sure everybody back then what we would do is we would watch that. And then go in the backyard or go in there, pick up right. and that was like practice that nonstop that I've never seen before. Yeah, I mean it was it was it was crazy. Like, bro, he, that was, he caught the ball on his chest. Yes. He caught the ball on his chest. I didn't even catch the ball on your chest. That was one of those things. I became obsessed with it, man. I was like always doing I was like, yo, you can do crazy things with the ball. Obviously, you saw Maradona did it, too, yes. right? But Maradona didn't transcend like like um Maradona would, would like you know have could do anything with the ball, but it was yeah. not like 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 street. Um, Great, yeah. Like Edgar Davids was just like gangster man, like just like, <laughs> anything he wants. And no, he was, and, he was nasty. For me, he just had such a big influence on like my 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 upbringing and just just what he was able to do with the ball on the ground, and it was just like unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, no, I agree. So, no, that's and, then, a, that's... and then he was playing it for Inter Milan with sunglasses, man. <laughs> wow, he's got sunglasses and dreadlocks, and he's just balling up on everybody in Europe. And you're like, who is this guy? Yeah. You know? And then, and then, we, you know, when he was uh, when him and Sadan was on the same squad, a Juve, yeah, 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 yeah. problem, yeah. Yeah. problem. For me, for me, the 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 player who I had the f- most fun watching, and and even today, you can just watch a game with him, was Zidane, like. I remember watching Zidane in, in 98. I was a little tiny kid, and I saw him, like, for me, Brazil was the best, and I didn't even know what France was actually doing, and I didn't know how good they actually were. Mm-hmm. So even when you're a little kid in America, it's not like you're – this is back when when there's no there's no YouTube. There's no, like, you know, you can't you, – you're just, like, going on basically what you see. And mm-hmm. for me, Brazil was the best, and then you just come, come out and see France destroy them, and then there's this, like – this guy named Zidane who's like balding on the sides and, and he comes out and just was like, it was a whole different style of football. It was like elegance and everything. And you're just like, what is this? And mm-hmm. I, I, I think like we're kind of blessed to, to, to see football in that way because, yeah. you know, just like we had the Galacticos, you know, mm-hmm. I don't think anybody will ever really see that as so many great players in one team. Like, mm-hmm. like, like we were able to experience, yeah. um, now you have good teams like you know okay in the next best in our lifetime was barcelona when they had uh yeah uh, you know when they beat manchester united uh in the champions league final that was also pretty outstanding but mm-hmm. but like the culture that 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 our our generation had going yeah. on i think that's that's probably why like you know a lot of people that i know that are my age i guess they they really like coaching because you, you you have to stay involved in the game after watching stuff like that you know yeah. what I mean? it's just like Actually, I mean, you 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 hit the nail on the head, and mm-hmm. and that that that's a big part of what we you know what we try to do here. And then, you know that this is a piece like you know in in Europe or in South America or Africa, etc. The culture is the you know football culture is so ingrained in the regular culture that yeah. you know it's just yeah, there. We're Americans. We're Americans. So it's I know this is what I'm saying. Like th- that's the problem, right? So here in America, mm-hmm. it's. Like we, you have to like you know with us like so with DC Eleven for instance, all the coaches are immigrants, you know. So yeah. we all come from that native culture, and yeah. and so we like we have this what you're talking about. Like we have that, and and our a big part of our work is not just like the technical development, but it's also making sure these kids understand the culture of the game, you know, yeah. and develop that passion because like like you like you're saying once you experience watching like you know in the 90s and you know early 2000s watching those guys play 
like you develop a, a love for the game that is going to follow you for the rest of your life. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's yeah. I mean, it's, when, when I was a little kid, I mean, I remember running home from the bus in school because I remember uh, when Florida, the champions league was always start at, at two forty five PM mm-hmm. and it was on ESPN two. Mm-hmm. I don't even think they have ESPN anymore. I don't know how right. ESPN two. And, you know, you just like run home and you turn on and you, all of a sudden you're like, doo, 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 and it just, it's just, Oh man. And yeah, like I said, you just ingrained with a different culture in, yeah. in, in that time. And, but and so, for you though, the reason you even had that culture was because you were in this, you know, you said Argentinian, yeah, Asian, yeah, Jamaican. I, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, no. I think uh, it, it's, it's very interesting being an American, you know, because like, you know, being in, being in Europe, especially like if you're a European, it's just, you're expected to just footballs around you all the time. Mm-hmm. Being an American, especially at that time, you have to seek it out. Yeah. yeah. You have to seek it out. It was one of those things that like, if you want to be involved in football, if you want to know the scores, if you want to watch games, you have to put an effort, <laughs> you know, That's so true. To, to there, find it. Wasn't, you know, like, it's not like here, you just turn on the TV and everything's football. You go on the newspaper, everything's football. It's not, there, especially at that time, MLS was just starting, mm-hmm. you know, and nobody really cared about football that much. It was like the restart after NASL and everything like that. And and if you wanted to watch the English Premier League, you needed a pay-per-view, you know, or you needed to get a black box. And, and mm-hmm. uh, like I said, it was like, it was effort to um, be involved in football back then. And it was, yeah. Yeah. It made it worth the while, you know, yeah, like if you really have like something you want to go after, you have to just, you know, pursue it and everything. So, yeah. Well, okay. So I, I, I want to go back to you at 12, 13, 14, being in class, instead of paying attention to, you know, whatever the teacher is talking about with science, you're drawing like all of, like you guys too, I'm sure. So <laughs> <laughs> you're drawing up, you're just imagining being able to feel yeah, it, you know, yeah. and join up. <laughs> if, you, if, you're, if you're having a podcast talking about football, then you definitely weren't paying attention in science class. <laughs> so, <laughs> Facts. <laughs> no, you know, this, this is what I'm saying. Like, mm. like the, the, the kind of love and, and, you know, for me, for instance, like even with like with a lot of guys who play football, right. Yeah. Like once we start talking, like when I, when I start talking to them, they look at me like, yo, how do you, how can you know all of this about, about the game? You know, mm-hmm. like, because like, like, you know, when you were naming players, for instance, like most, most um, guys, if they started playing, let's just say in the late 2000, yeah. they would name, you know, Ronaldinho and then yeah. everybody from there. Right. But you're going back, you're naming Zico, you're naming uh, George Weir. Yeah. Like, like, I said, like, like it's, it's one of those things when you seek it out, you know, you, you, the, the the knowledge is more because you're seeking it out it's not like it's just it's not like you're just you know mm-hmm. absorbing what's around you it's you're right. really like seeking out right. more information because you're just fascinated by it like i said i remember i would watch hours and hours of garincha how yep. he had like one leg is longer than the other and so yep. he was able to change the angle of the ball and, yep. and it was unbelievable and now you see players that are able to do that now and they have like you know both legs are the same size right right, you know, with, right. With things like he was running past he was running past the ball like throwing fakes and throwing shapes and stuff yep. Yep. and uh yeah man it's like i said it's one of those things that, like it if you seek if you seek it the emotions there and you remember everything and it's just a different uh, different yeah. culture no i mean no that, i mean that's what you like the the piece of Garancha that you just is, is actually is important because you know one of the things I think is if you really like the game or you really love the game, seeking the the what happened before your time is yeah. important because then then you then you can appreciate your time even more and then players that you're seeing now right yeah and, and especially like when it comes down to playing like at that time you know you you look at it and you wanted to know just because you like it. But now it's like, since I've, then the evolution came to coaching where I was just looking to making other players better. Exactly. One of those things is like, um, right, like, like, like I said to you before, I've been coaching since I'm 15 years old. But I've been playing also and doing everything. But when it comes down to like, like what for me individual coaching is, and for me individual coaching, you can train a team and still be an individual coach. You're just trying to make the individual better. Um, the individual and respective to the team. But it's one of these things, like the more players you've seen, different players, you, you kind of like you see a player and you and you, you kind of like trying to form him into something that you've seen before. And the more yep. players you've seen and the more different kind of aspects and players you've seen, you can form him into it. Mm-hmm. And if you've only been watching 
one generation of players, you can't really say like, it's weird, man. It's kind of like forming a, forming a sculpture. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, no. uh, and <laughs> different players have different ways that they move. And, and eventually you see a player that you've never seen before, but you feel like you've seen him before yes. because he has the same body movement, the same yes. body structure. There's only yes. so many, so many ways that players are, um, are how their bodies work and how they're formed and everything. Mm-hmm. It's one of these things like the more you play and the more you're involved and the more you watch, it's, you get to you get to know. Okay, there's some players that are only good with their back to goal. There's some players that are only good behind the ball. There's some players that are only good with their back to the line. And you and you see like when they fit into that perspective, how the body looks like if they're only good behind the ball. How their body looks like if they're only good with their back to the uh, to the goal. How their body looks like if they only have their back to the line. How their how, how their knees are shaped. How the, how their legs turn. How their toe. How their feet turn in if they turn out. Um, are they you know, like you, okay, they can strike a ball usually better if the feet turn out. They can, you know, they can usually play a ball with the outside of their foot better if the if they're a little bit pigeon toed. They they're they're usually central midfield players if they're a little bit uh, have those X legs like Michael Jordan had. Mm-hmm. Um, you look at like a Chris and Pulisic and like you know, like you see the 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 form of Chris and Pulisic, how he moves around and stuff like that. It's one of these things like th- those are like the agile players that can move in and out of spaces and stuff like that. And and it's one of these things. The more um, football you take in, the more like you recognize those things. And you know, like when you see a player who's like has a certain body structure, you're not going to be like, oh, this is going to be a great center uh, center back. You know, you're going to be like, oh, this guy's a good center mid because he's he's light on his feet. He doesn't stay on it when he's moving. He doesn't stay on his heels. He's you know, and so. That's what goes into coaching, man. And it's one of those things that, like, you have to know your craft in order to um, have, have somebody else to to, to, yes. to get to the next level. Yes, yes, yes. Right. So, you know, this is what I was going to ask you. When you, let's say you're, you know, 13 in science class, not paying attention, and then you're drawing up these plays. And then, or no, at 12, I think it's when you meet your mentor, and then he introduces you to the, or he gives you a tape to watch the Argentinian yeah. team, right? And you see... Mm-hmm. One has that, has that, you know, because um, that Argentinian coach was a tough coach. Has that, has has that, uh, have you taken on that personality in your coaching no. as you? Um, as you... I, that, that's a really good question. Um, it, you know, my personality is basically just trying to get the player better and whatever that requires, then I uh, adopt that, you know, like, um, but it, it basically comes down to it like, everybody has their own personality. If I try to like, you know, um, just, just take what I saw Marcelo be also doing, it's not going to be authentic. It's not going to work. So mm-hmm. it's one of those things like, that's a really great question because like people ask me all the time, like, um, you know, like how should, if they have any advice on like what to do. And it's, it's one of the things like football is so, is so special that like, you have to find your own way. You have to find your own way to talk to players. You have to find your own way to be um, because the, your own what you want at the end of the day is to make the players better and 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 if you're authentic and then they feel it and they feel your energy that you're authentic then it comes comes across better you know like you always see these guys that that you you see you've always seen a session and i'm not going to say like who's good and who's bad but you always see a session and you're like yeah it's good but like he's not you know he's faking it like you know what i mean like he, you know it's not that's not who he is he's just he's just doing that and he's just saying these things because that's what he saw on youtube or that's what he saw you, you know what i'm saying but like you feel it you feel, sorry, the, you feel the energy when it's like man he really believes what he's saying <laughs> yeah. and players believe it and yeah. i don't know what you say like even an eight-year-old kid's gonna believe it and it's one of those things that like you could say whatever you want to them but if you believe that they that they you know like that, it, that this is really what's going to help them, then they're also going to take that information and it's going to, they're going to, you know, they're going to be able, you, you can manifest then like what you want. Like you have to see what you want and just, just like find your own way to, to, to bring it about, you know, like, because if, if history shows us anything, you know, there's always these guys that come around, especially in football, that they have a completely different perspective and a completely different way of doing things. And it's successful and it's successful for them because that's who they are. You know, like, um, Mauricio Sachi and stuff like that you hear stories about him what he was doing with the players that's who he was you know Mm -hmm. like you can't say like hey I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna try to coach like Mourinho that's who Mourinho is Mm -hmm. you can't say you're gonna be Pep Guardiola your your story defines like how you are how your energy is and and what you see the game as and you just gotta like that's why it's one of those things people are asking me like what do you do just just coach just go work and and find your way and find what 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 you stand for and uh 
then try to try to build on that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and that's, that goes to answer the question. I'm not like Marcelo Bielsa at all. No, no. Like <laughs> I like some of his ideas and I take his ideas. And, uh, not, not some of his ideas. I like a lot of his ideas. Right. And I try to say like, how would Nate uh, put that into effect? Not like how would Marcelo Bielsa put that into effect? I, I hadn't had the experiences that he had yeah. in his yeah. life. And I'm sure there's some things that I could do that he couldn't do because he hasn't had the same experience, life experiences that I've had. Same yeah. way with you guys. Yeah. Yeah, you, know. You, you know, actually, you bring up something. Um, and, you know, I know you've been coaching, uh, you know, professional academies and you still yeah. do in, in Europe, uh, in Germany now uh, for, you said, what, the last seven years, eight years? Yeah. Um, in Germany, I've been working uh, like when I first I first started working for a professional academy in 2015. Before that, I was working for the DFB doing like different um, regional training centers and stuff like that. Working for amateur clubs. Uh, I was an under 18 coach. I was an under, I was a assistant coach for one of for like a fourth division team. Um, but then I started working at, 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 uh, at Greta Ferd. I don't know if you know the, the, the club there, second Bundesliga. I was the youth coach there, individual coach there. And then I moved to, to Nuremberg and uh, I was then three years just with first team and per, Second Bundesliga, first Bundesliga, um, and then now I'm nice. just working with with academy players. Nice. No, what I was getting at was yeah. what yeah, you just I brought up. Like go through like a C, uh, resume or anything. Just no, 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 no. We because you know it doesn't matter here. Like yeah. you know this is if you if you know football and you you know you play football or coach or train football. That's. Yeah. That's you know, right. that, yeah, and, and and actually, what you what you just brought up is actually a good point because here in the, you know in the U.S. and that's what I was actually going to ask you was about, you know, here is all about your in the U.S. is all about your CV, you know, what license you've acquired, uh, etc. Yeah. But what I was going to ask you was, um, given, you know, you started playing with a bunch of immigrants in South Florida and then transition and then you play in you know over Europe, etc. And now you've been coaching in Europe at the professional level for the last, say, eight, uh, ten years. Yeah. Have you had the opportunity to come back to the U.S. and not South Florida? Not, you know, because it's not fair, because you, you're yeah. essentially going back in the same, yeah. you know, yeah. culture. No, I actually haven't. I actually have not. Um, since uh, I've been in Europe, I've been, I've been uh, I only go back just to, like, visit my, 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 my family. Okay. Um, I've got family in North Carolina. I've got family in Florida. Um, but I haven't been involved in, 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 in U.S. soccer in any shape, way, way shape, or form. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Since I left in uh, 2008, 2008. No, 2007, 2007. And, and when you left, right? Because, uh, you, you know, you play club then, but you were still in South Florida, right? Where? When you were playing club in the U.S.? Yeah, yeah, I was in uh, play, I was playing in South Florida, and then I was only in college uh, at NC State. So. Oh, I agree. So, what, what's your take on the level of football and the you know the training and competition, especially I, now that you have? Yeah, I can't really speak about it because I haven't um, actually been there to see it in person. Um, the interesting thing is that there was like, a, um, you know, there was a there was an influx of good players. I mean, like you know, what I'd never understood is that why did they change up the system how it was? Because, you know, the system how it was was really good without the uh, developmental academies that they had and everything like that. And then they disbanded the developmental academies. So I guess I was right in thinking it wasn't very good. Um, but what's interesting is, is that all of the players that, um, that are helping U.S. soccer and uh, their future of U.S. soccer, their major development wasn't in the United States. So then you got to also think it's like one of these things like, what, is the structure really working? Um, you know, like for me, a, a really great example is uh, Reyna. Um, you know, his dad knows football. Is is I think, you know, he, he definitely. What was what was he working? Well, he was also working for New York. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and and it was one of those things that he recognized. Hey, I've got to get my son. Um, you know, in a different environment, and he took his kid to Dortmund. You know, and mm -hmm. um, yeah, and now you see the 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 results of that. So. That, that, that was for me a very interesting case because like, you know, Christian Pulisic, his dad also played, his mom also played. Um, they took him to, to, to Europe pretty quickly, but they, they, just, they still didn't have the same amount of, of, of influence and knowledge that Claudio Reyna had. And Claudio Reyna, you know, we're talking about, he's like Mr. America, man. You yeah, know, like yeah. he, he was captain of, uh, 
of, of, of the U.S. national team in the 2002 World Cup, and yep. you know they almost beat Germany. Mm-hmm. And uh, he he's played in Europe, and and his son is is a really good player for the United for the United States youth teams. Plays in New York, and he himself said, you know what, we're going to take him out. And, mm-hmm. and brought him over. All the players that are doing well in Europe, they they also they had their major development in in, in Europe. I think we're um, on a good way because you know the the talent is there, obviously. Um, mm-hmm. But for me, like you, you know what, I really don't understand. Also, and I keep, maybe this is getting off topic and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, the left back who plays for Barcelona, and it's always you see it. It's all over. Like, oh man, the first American to 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 win the the. Um, La Liga or something like that, yeah. He's not American. <laughs> like he he uh, he's great. He's a great player, but he's not. He did, did he didn't even maybe he was born in the United States? I don't know. His parents were, were American, but he speak English. And I'm talking about for me, like an American is a kid that grew up. And like for me, there's nothing against him. There's nothing against him. You know what I'm saying? It's not like oh, you know, just stay in his country or anything. That's fine. But don't don't say like the first American to play in La Liga. For me, the first, the first American, if, if Giovanni Reina plays in La Liga, okay, uh, there we go, yeah? Mm-hmm. But, like, it's not like this kid is the first American to play for Barcelona. He happens to have an American passport. And it's great. He helps us out. That's awesome. He should. But I don't think he even identifies as an American. He's Dutch, man. And um, that's why one of these things is, like, America also has to find their identity, you know? And mm-hmm. – um, which is an interesting thing because we're just a melting pot of different cultures and different races and everything. So I think that's what I never understood is that you just embrace that, you know, the culture is there and everything, but. You know, here's something I always say to, um, to, to folks, you know, like what the, the big European clubs, you know, so, you know, you go in all the clubs in London or yeah. Madrid, uh, Barca, et cetera, what they, scout the world for you know like they're, they're going to Senegal to get a player they're going to Brazil to get a player they're going Trinidad etc all these places in because we're in the DC metro area right yeah. all of those immigrants are coming here yeah right so that like the raw talent is here mm-hmm. now what, what you know what what I'm trying to get a better sense of where is the gap between the development process, you know, like, or oh, oh, what do you see in the development process that in... You have to pay to play, to play in the United States. No, no, right, right. But but even, like, so let's just say you right now, you know, you, you've been you like, yeah. you've been working uh, for 10 years yeah. in development. What are you seeing that is being done there that wasn't done when you were training, you know, during your youth club uh, time? Well, that's a really good question. Just the quality itself is better. I think the scouting and stuff, and it's what like it's one of these things that you could never ever ever compare it because I think my club was very um, was different because we were basically like just this was before developmental academy. We were basically just formed from all kids all over Florida. There would be kids from, from that would fly down from 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 uh, from Orlando to play for us and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But again, at the end of the day, you have to have money to do that. You know, yeah. and uh, I remember we had like two or three kids that didn't have money that were like, um, you know, doing things that people shouldn't be doing to get money mm-hmm. so they could play and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it just goes down to one of these things like, like in Europe, if you're good enough, you, you're going to be taken care of. In the United yeah. States, you have to not only be good enough, you have to also have enough money to support to, for the training fees. You have to also find a way to get the training. You also have to have some connections to get you in because you know how it is also in the United States. You, you, in, every, in every aspect, you know, um, there, has, there, there has to be somebody you know to get into that and to do that. And, mm-hmm. and it, that's, that, that was one of the things that I saw that I see here. It's one of these things like if you're good enough, you're good enough, and that's it. Nobody really cares. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I still think – and one day maybe they'll get away with that and get away from that in the United States because now they have like the MLS academies and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It's going to take a long time. It's so you said with the process in Europe, right? If you're good enough to take care of you, is it like you get a scholarship to play on those clubs? Oh, how do that yeah, work? Yeah, yeah. I mean like, uh, okay, let's just say like, okay, uh, for example, we'll talk about uh, under 
17 kid, right? Mm-hmm. So we're talking about an under 17 kid who, who let's say, because I'm at Nuremberg, I can say, okay, use Nuremberg as an example. An mm-hmm. under 17 kid plays in a little tiny village in Germany. Okay. Somebody sees him, they think he's good, and they say, hey, um, we're going to um, – we'll, 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 not pay you, but we're going to put you up in our academy. You get three meals a day. We're going to take you to school, do this and this and this. You're going to get top training. You don't have to worry about anything. All you got to worry about is just playing football. That's it. Mm -hmm. We're going to take you to school, do do all of this. You're going to get the top training. You're going to have 10 training sessions a week and everything like that. Money never comes into it. It's not like they're like, Hey, but you got to pay your fees on the month. Um, you got to, you got to pay your transportation fee. Uh, you know, it's just like one of these things. It's just, until they until they can do that in the United States, and I, and I know they can do it now. They have the MLS academies, and I'm sure there's. I, I don't think the players are paying who are playing in the MLS academies, but um, it's still one of those things. Like, uh, you know, there's not a in, in Germany. I can only speak for Germany right now because I'm, you know, but also in other clubs is the same. They don't really have like like crazy fees for the kids also to play. I mean. I know like for an amateur youth club, if we're talking about like under 15 or under 14 or something like that, it's maximum, 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 maximum. They have like a, a membership fee for the actual club itself. And that'll be like, I don't know, like, like 40 euros a month or something like that. Mm-hmm. And that's just, you, you know what I'm saying? And, and also like um, the way, and, you, and then the question is like, how are they financing that? Right. So how are you financing to pay the coaches and everything? The, the system and the structure and how everything's done it, they have like this thing where it's called a, in German, they say Ausbildungsschädigung, where it's like um, if a club pay, if a club has been um, working on working with a player and he goes to a Bundesliga club, the Bundesliga club has to pay the club to have him. So then the club that was training him gets the money and that's how you keep the financial infrastructure um, um, good. Mm-hmm. Uh, something like that will never happen is, 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 is a reason why European clubs look for American players because you don't have to pay the, um, the fee. <laughs> you know, if, 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 if U.S. soccer doesn't have that, they're trying to have it. They don't. In Canada, they have it, so it's a little bit difficult to get players from Canada because Vancouver Whitecaps are always trying to, um, you know, take as much money as they possibly can. <laughs> I've dealt with them a few times, um, but that's also one of the things. Like that's that's the reason why the, the infrastructure is a little bit different on how they can finance the players coming in and everything like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um... No, I mean this, this gap between the the development of players in the U.S. versus players in Europe or South America or Africa is, is a is a huge thing, and it's not due to lack of talent. Um, and so you know, it's, it's a good conversation to have, and hopefully, yeah. we can come up with some solutions. Uh, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. But I think, but, I think if I'm if I'm being honest, like. Yeah. Um, the MLS structure that they have is really good. They have good coaches. It, you know, it's going in the right direction. It's going in the yeah. right direction because now, even so, um, I know that MLS clubs, if they can sell a player, they get to keep the profit. They get, you know, it's not one of these things that we're anymore where the, uh, where they just strictly going to the league and everything like that. So the infrastructure is going to get better, but it has to be like a grassroots um, uh, improvement. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it has to be one of these things like, even at the end of the day, right? If we're talking, if we're being honest, if you're a private coach in the United States, and I know this because I know some private coaches, you know, if you don't have enough clients, you're not making enough money. So it yeah. comes down to one of these things. It's like a, like a, like a, just a, just a circle. You, you got to get, you got to get as many people as you can. You got to make the camps. You got to do this, you got to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I honestly think like if the grassroots level improves, then the United States soccer level itself will improve. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any ideas on how to improve the grassroots level? Luckily, that's not my responsibility. <laughs> uh, if a player, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> man, honestly, like when I first started out, I was like, I'll be candid with you guys. And like, um, when I first started out, I was on like I was like, man, my goal is I want to come back to the states. I want to work for a national team or something like that, under seventeen national team coach. And I don't even want, I don't even care anymore, man. It's just one of these things. Like you, you have a once you, the more you get involved, you're just like, man, you just want to help players get better. It doesn't matter what what age they are and everything like yeah. that. So you just don't see American, German, African. You don't even care. It's just like, man, you see a player who's got talent and you see it, and it's like, man, I can help this guy. Yeah. You know, and and. And yeah, it's just, that's one of those things like, like 
training, you know, you know, I don't know if you guys looked at it, like training the player who Mateus Pereira, he came to us at, um, at Nuremberg when he wasn't even like playing for us and everything. And I was watching playing in Premier League and stuff like that. And I worked with him and, and, and it, it, like that kind of stuff is just, that's what you would do it for, man. You don't like, you don't do it just to be like, say, Hey, I want to make America better and stuff like that. You do it for the individual players. Cause you just want to, you, you work for the game. You don't work for the country, you know? Yeah. yeah no. to, to add on that. So what is it? What, what do you gain? Like, especially when you coach, like training those professional players, or what are one of the uh, most exciting thing and was one of the difficult part of it when you coaching professional for, for him or just any player, any, any professional players. Yeah. Oh, I mean, every player is different. They're all individuals, man. And one of the most exciting things, like, for example, uh, I was working with him. Uh, uh, yeah, obviously, one of the most exciting things, he scores a goal against Bayern Munich in way, way, one of the ways that we train uh, uh, every single day. And in the beginning of the season, he was not even playing. and He was having a rough time. And, and uh, that's, like, one of the best experiences, obviously, when, when you have something that goes into that good fruition. Mm -hmm. But I mean, like you know, nobody sees like behind the scenes how difficult things are and everything, how difficult the people are, how difficult uh, personalities are. Because at the end of the day, when we're talking about like real genius players, they're very difficult personalities. Mm -hmm. You know, like because you're you, you, it's just like you can't even explain it, man. It's just one of these things. Like if you're so good at something, you're so ridiculously good at something, you just can't be normal. You can't have a normal, you know, you can't have a normal personality. You know, yeah, like. Maybe like Andres Iniesta is probably normal and stuff like that. It's just really <laughs> exception. But, but most of the players that I've met, players that I've met that are like that are really geniuses, mm -hmm. you just like you accept the fact that they're just like something. They don't they don't have like all of the all of the human skills that we do because yeah. it's not possible. It's not possible. Yeah, yeah. Energy is going somewhere else. You know? Yeah, exactly. That Their the skill is overdeveloped, so it took away, yeah. you know, from someone yeah. else. Um, you know, what would you say has been your most memorable moment, both as a player and as a coach? Um, as a player, when I was – uh, I was in a small club in Latvia where they went from the second division to first division, and uh, we qual we won the the, the the league cup and qualified for the Europa League qualification. That was like crazy. That was uh, that was one. Of, that was like the the first time that like that that I saw like how crazy football was, and it was just that was one of those. That was a really cool experience just to be able to play in like a European competition because it was also one of these things like I know I wasn't that good. But it was like, man, I really like playing in, in Europa League quali qualifications. Like, man, mm -hmm. you know, like, um, and then as a coach, I'd say without a doubt, uh, getting promoted from the first Bundesliga. Mm -hmm. um, that was amazing. That was amazing because it was just one of these things like in the beginning of the year, um, just the situation as it was, is like the head coach brought me in because the head coach, I knew him. Because I worked with him at like one of the um, developmental schools at DFB when he was also working there, and we would have conversations about football and everything. And then when he got the head coaching job, it was crazy. I was like, thought he's never gonna what is what he's doing there. He just became head coach at second Bundesliga, and everybody thought they were gonna go down. And he brought me in to be his technical individual coach, and uh, I, I brought me in to like not earn not earning a lot of money, and it was it was crazy because I was like you know train and. He, and uh, but he gave me my chance, and and, I, and that year when we went up from second to first Bundesliga, I was like working with players before training. I was doing a big part of the training sessions during the session, after the session, working with the players. He gave me so much responsibility, and um, and we just started winning games. And uh, then it was one of these things where we just we just we just got promotion, and it was like everybody was crying, and like the whole city was going insane, and it was like you, you don't even realize that you're like I'm oh, I'm I'm a, I'm on the coaching staff, like a a, a big in first Bundesliga, man. Yeah. And it was one of these things like you don't even realize it. It just happened so quick and everything like that was for sure, for sure. The number one experience I had as a coach. Nice. Nice. Uh, actually, since you, you brought up, you know, the coaching, who are you, your top five coaches of all time? What do you define as a top coach? Well, it's up to you. I mean, you, some people would say, you know, Winning Obviously, games, trophies, yeah, uh, influence on players, uh, tactical like, understanding. Not like, not like you're a player, man. You can't be like, oh, top coach of all time. I mean, if you want to talk about top coach of all time, then hands down Mourinho. He's won everything in, in so many different countries. He, how many countries has he been to? 
But if that's, if that's, if that's, <laughs> that's just so you know, just so you know, that's James' fine. favorite coach. That that's James. That's James' guy. Same thing I'm saying. If, yes. if that's if that's what you define as a coach, <laughs> winning things, then Mourinho hands down. There is no other. Who who else? He's been yeah. he's been to he's he, he won the Champions League with Porto, man. When yeah. He, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. he won the Champions League with, with Inter Milan. He won yeah. the league in England. He won the league in Italy. He won the E-League in Spain. He won the league in Portugal. Um, yeah. You know, but for me, probably like, but then it also goes to the coaches that transcend in football. Yeah. Wenger, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, I think without Arsene Wenger, football would be not where it is today. Mm-hmm. Um, also, the players he developed is unreal. It's, I don't think anybody realizes how crazy that was, what Wenger actually did in regards to player development. Um, mm-hmm. And then if you want to talk about Alex Ferguson, the culture that he instilled at Manchester United, now you see how difficult they're having it now. So how crazy it was to actually say what he was, at, what he was doing. Mm-hmm. Um, um, for me, Marcelo Bielsa is probably the, 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 the most brilliant coach, successful, obviously not. Mm-hmm. But I think he influenced the entire generation that came after him. <sighs> Uh, Sa- Sachi also developed the defensive football that now everybody's using. Um, yeah, it's a it's a it's a it's a difficult question. You uh, notice I didn't say Guardiola. Uh, he's good, but he's for me he's not like one of the all time greats. Mm. He had all time great players. Mm. <laughs> say, say that again. What was the last part you just said? Yes, yes, yes. Say it again. All-time great players. Yes. <laughs> Oh my God! He would say that too, but that's the craziest thing. He would say that too, man. He's really, 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 really good. The way yeah. he sees football, it's incredible. We were never playing football out of the back until Guardiola came. You know when they're talking about playing the goal kick out of the back, we'll always play short, always play on the ground. Um, Guardiola started doing that, putting the center, putting the center backs here back, putting the wing backs forward, putting the um, center mids in the middle. Also, the one you know with uh, outside backs pushing in during um during build up play and stuff like that he did that but if he didn't have the unbelievable players that he had he wouldn't be able to do that yeah. so that's one of those things where it's like again Mourinho goes to a team with with nobodies and you know so mm. all right i mean th- that's controversial just fyi the yeah of course it is but but, <laughs> but um you know, like this is also not one of these conversations where we're just like, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I, I'm just saying, like, you know, if people who know you, if they watch it, you know, they will say, what? How are you gonna, you know, say that about Pep? Um, no, yeah, I mean, but, also, but Pep has this, this. He's, but honestly, I'm saying, like, he's great. He's yeah. one of the all-time greats for sure. Yeah. But he's also had the all-time great players. Yeah. No, he, that's true. He says that. They said they asked him the other day. They're like, "Why are you having so so much success right now with Man City?" He's like, "We have a lot of money." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, true. like it's, it's Jurgen Klopp for me is also one of the one of the coaches that that transcended football. Yeah. Um. Uh. Just because of the whole pressing thing and everything like that, yeah, and how yeah. soft football. Uh, um, with uh, with the rock and roll football, as you like yeah. to call it, and stuff, and the, and and the aggressive pressing, not and and with pressing triggers, um, not trying to just win the ball directly, but win win the the ball after the pressing the third the third man or the second man. Um, so for me, like the like you said before, all time best coaches are the coaches that had a a lasting impact on the game. Mm-hmm. Guardiola had a lasting impact on the game, so he's obviously up there. But he's not for me personally. My Top, top coach. Yeah, yeah. no, no. that makes sense. Um, yeah, have you studied Cruyff at all? Absolutely. Um, yeah. shit, no. uh, can, can you can you can you pause, can you pause it just for one second? I'm really really sorry. I I, I, I just one second, one second, one yeah. second. It, it, this is what I'll say about like the whole genesis of this, right? Like, so yeah. you know, if I'm sure you remember this, especially when you if you go back home right now and in that community with the Haitians and Jamaicans, et cetera, after you played a pickup game or whatever, you spent like another hour, two hours on the sideline talking about the game, you know, like about, and so. With, with Haitians and Jamaicans, it's always difficult, man. <laughs> no, no, I know, I know. It's more argument. It's like, it's yeah. just like, you know, like, trust me, I, I know that whole, um, yeah. but no, I mean, so it's like, there's a, you know, 
there's a the certain, energy come, that comes out when people talk about football. Yeah, mm-hmm. especially people who like like you know I think you brought this up earlier when you were saying you know when you coach if uh, there's folks who try to take on uh, a fake personality as yeah. a coach and the kids yeah. you know the kids can read it etc cetera, etc. Cetera. But it's you know it's the same thing and and what I find is like actually to your point like guys and girls who actually are you know really about the game and you know yeah. in development and all this kind of stuff. They can do this, like, we, we can talk for days. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the ones... Honestly, the ones, a different kind of energy comes out and you just forget about where you are, what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, but, like, the ones who are faking it, like you said, you know, like, they're, they're trying to take on a certain personality. Like, I want to be Pep or I want to be Club or whatever it is. And having found their voice... Those things, you know what's really weird? And, like, uh, we're going into, like, a whole different topic. I mean, I've talked to, 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 to coaches and players, but mostly... Americans and, and when we have the problem where they're trying to like talk to me and ask me about like with periodization and the macro cycle and the micro cycle and stuff like that. And I just think, like, hey man, like, like you talk to, to, to like the head coach, nobody's talking about that kind of stuff, man. Yeah. This is just like, like, and that's just not what football is, you know, mm-hmm. like, and, and um, yeah, the football in his, in his essence is just, you know, like what we're talking about and just like being yourself and, and, and trying new things and stuff. And, and, you know, like nobody's going to reinvent the wheel, but you're just going to find out that, you know, like uh, uh, w- what direction do you want to go in? You know? And yeah, yeah that, that's how football's going to get better, especially in the States. And look, I said this maybe like 10 years ago. I remember I had this, this conversation with somebody about like, what, 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 what is United States? What is U S soccer and stuff? We as Americans have to find our own way of playing football. We're Americans, you know, like, we're from different places. Nobody's, but one thing, one thing, um, you know, like I, 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 sometimes I don't feel like I identify with America because I've been living outside of uh, America so long. It's almost half of my life now, mm-hmm. but I do identify with Amer- with America in the way that America, we just have a different mentality, man. It's just one of these things. Like we, we, we don't give up. We don't, we don't, not even, not even don't giving up. We don't abide to the rules if they don't, go in our favor I, I mm-hmm. if, it, if, if something is not going in our way we just change it you yeah. know <laughs> you know what i'm yeah. saying like yeah and and, and there has to be the way that we play football also with a way like you know there's no like rules to how we have to do that just do you know uh, actually you you actually yeah. hit on something that's so interesting right which is you know uh, lately i've been uh, lately i'll say for like the last six months i've been studying uh brazilian football and you know yeah. the transition in the history and what you pointed out is like the the product we have now, yeah. Brazilian football, is exactly due to this. Uh, is is due to what they call improvisation, essentially, right? So yeah, it's jingo. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. But but it, it's it's because the resources are not there. You know, there 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 was this huge, especially in the fifties and late sixties. Oh hey, Com- wait, wait, I gotta, I gotta stop. You know, one of those things is <laughs> the, the question I get all the time here. Uh-huh. Like, I'm, I'm like a technical coach in Germany. They're like, oh, should you? You know, like the Brazilians, they use a really small ball. They, they, they play with like, with like oranges or they make their own balls. Should we do that? I was like, no, man. They just do that because they don't have a ball. <laughs> like, 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 if you have a ball, you play with a ball. Trust me. The kids in out, they're like, oh, because in Brazil, they play on the sand. They play in the streets with glass. Maybe we should do that. No, man. Like, it's just, that's just what they have. That's it. But like, yes. Yes. It's the, but, 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 but we're talking about Jenga and things like that. Yes. That's because they they grew up in, in Brazil. You mm. can't teach an American kid Jenga. It's not possible. That's Jenga fact. is being able to have that flowing movement, to be able to have that dancing movement. To be, mm. And not even all Brazilians have it. But the right. Brazilians have it, the ones that are like usually – have they have a they have a they have a background in cap not capoeira but they just have that rhythm and they have that. Yeah, also. no, no, they have background in samba uh, yeah, dancing yeah. capoeira like all of that. No, but the point I mean the point is is this is that like is you make use of what you have right exactly um, exactly and and this is something that's like you know to your point this is something that's missing in you know, the, the U S uh, system, which is why I was asking about, you know, like, like, do you have any ideas to, you know, to improve the the gap in, you know, development or uh, whatever I think it is. The United States just has to find its identity, man. You know, yeah. like you see, you see the English identity coming out. Um, and they started talking about that maybe like eight years ago about the yeah. DNA, like what we actually yeah. want to have. Um, mm-hmm. what, what's the, what's the player DNA of, of, of England. Mm-hmm. And you see it coming out. 
if I'm being honest, you know, you see that, like, you have a um, Marcus Rashford, you have a, um, oh, what's his name again? I forgot his name from, uh, from, from City, the one who. Sure, Sterling. No, 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 no. The oh, uh, Foden, Foden. Foden, Foden. Foden. Mm-hmm. Foden is just like the, 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 the development of the English system. Yeah. Uh, what's it called? Uh, embodied, embodied, you yeah. know, like just all the work that they've been doing and all, yeah. all that, that that's, that's Phil Foden, you yeah. know? Yeah. He's got like, he's got like everything. He's got everything yeah. like a coach's dream. Like yeah. I remember watching a game one time and it was just like, if any kid wanted to learn about football, they just have to watch Phil Foden. He's like yeah. constantly looking around, literally like looking at the lines, trying to find how to get in between the lines. Like yeah. he's opening up and like everything's perfect with what he's doing. And it's one of these things you see it. It's like, wow, that's okay. That's what they're trying to do. Yeah. No, no. I mean, yeah, I mean, exactly. And he's hungry. Him, like, like you said, Rashford hungry. You know what I mean? Like these guys are hungry for the game and yeah. ready to get busy at any moment. Like, you know, if the, if the ball's at their foot or if the ball's not at the foot, it, it really doesn't matter. Um, but no, I mean, uh, I mean, you know, but, 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 what I wanted to say, man, is like, if there was a way to have the same kind of um, culture, personality, and um, swagger that we have towards basketball, have that in football, mm-hmm. that's the right way to go. That's, that's, what, that's, that, that's what that's what this is. That's what that's we're working on. I also think it's the it's the culture of what basketball is successful because the players or the family understand the culture, right? So, like you said, with football, people it's not a lot. Of, maybe few of us understand the culture behind it. Not a lot of American does, right? Yeah. You can't have the culture if you don't understand what you're doing, right? So I guess yeah, yeah. that's what we need to build is our understanding. It's building understanding, but also the culture that goes around with basketball. It's one of these things that, like, you know what I'm saying? I, everybody everybody in the States had some affiliation with basketball. So everybody yeah. knows what I'm talking about when they're like, man, yeah. just you go one-on-one. It's like, who, who who's good? At, it, it's one of these things. It's like, you know, you can just – um you just leave somebody standing and you know what I'm saying? It's, it's you break the ankles. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, no, 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 trust me. Like, that's exactly, I mean. But also the culture that goes around basketball when it comes down to, and that's one of the things I try to relate that to, to soccer in some way, because right in basketball, you have these, you have this mentality of you could just stay on the court shooting for eight hours. Yeah. And then, uh, in soccer, you're talking about, oh, you want to reduce the load. You don't want them to get injured or something like that. Mm-hmm. The ment- If we can take that mentality that we have in basketball and put it towards soccer, that's going to be going a long way. And then I think if you could have that, you're on the level of Brazil. If yeah. it comes down to the culture, the mentality, the training uh, intensity, um, the, you know, the time involved and everything, uh, then, then then that's the that's the right way to go. Yeah. Yeah. That's my opinion. No, Again, no, no, no. Is, when I say something, that's just my opinion. So <laughs> that, it's also, that, that, that's, that's clearly good. understood. All, all of this is our opinions. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, b- before we 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 went on a tangent, uh, yeah. I asked you if because we were talking about coaches, and I asked you if you uh, you know you study club and you I'm not club uh, Cruyff. Yeah, you, no. you were about you were about to say something about Cruyff. Yeah, man, I love Johan Cruyff. Um, you know the what the things that he uh, developed and how his mind worked and also the players that he developed and, um, you know, total football, total football is one of these things that, you know, even today uh, you still see um, uh, teams and coaches that they just take stuff from Johan Cruyff. And if you think about how remarkable that actually is, that, that this guy was a coach and people are still today influenced from him. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's and that that's really what you've got to strive for as a coach. That's one of those. That's what and that's like if that's your goal, like I, you know, again, I've never had this conversation with anybody else, but I, I think maybe like one person told us, like, what what what's your goal? What do you want? And I was like, man, if I could know that the world was a better place, the football world or the real world that I w- existed, then that's for me success. And if you and if that's your goal and if that's if that's what you're going for, you're gonna be successful. And 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 Johan Cruyff football wouldn't be the same if it wasn't for Johan Cruyff. Players wouldn't exist if it wasn't for Johan Cruyff. Guardiola, the football that he plays, wouldn't exist if it wasn't for Johan Cruyff. So you have to think like the impact that he has on society. Even you know, like the, the whole Dutch culture was around like the the you know what 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 Cruyff embodied as a player, what Cruyff embodied as a coach, and and um, you know it transcends football. And that's one of those things that like. That's for me a successful coach. 
Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and that's, that's, uh, that we didn't really get a chance to talk about it, but he would be definitely my number one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, like that, that, the reason I asked you that, cause you know, when we, when you went through the coaches and then we got on the pep conversation, yeah, but, but, but we, we didn't even really say what defines a good coach. Yeah. Cause yeah. We, you asked me what, who's, who's the top coach. And I said, what's the top coach? Yeah. You know, if, if the top coach is really like, like defining an era, defining, uh, defining the future, then Johan Cruyff hands down. Yeah. Okay. So, how how would you define what makes a good coach? What in there's got to be a mix. There's got to yeah. be a mix. Obviously, um, you know, winning trophies. At the end of the day, you play football because you want to win. You're, you're, you're. Um, then it's it. So you got to define like what. So what's a coach then? A coach is, or a manager, or a trainer. Um, those are those are tons tons of different words. And at the end of the day, football is about winning. Yeah. So so if who's the most winning coach of all time? That's something else. Uh, football is about you know like developing players but it's, it's also about like transcending a culture and you know this this is a whole another whole other aspect that's why it's that's why football is so interesting because there's no like right and wrong answer you know it's like mm -hmm. you know how everybody else sees it some people will say you know arson wenger because you know before arson wenger was there people were you know still uh drinking beer at halftime and stuff like that <laughs> you're, you're laughing, you're laughing. It's, it's smoking no no that, that's those are facts he he he, 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 he Brought an entirely different new school to the England, <laughs> transcended oh, football. The, the the revolution of of of, of the modern footballer uh, came out of Arsene Wenger. Yeah. Um, and so you could say if it wasn't for Arsene Wenger, maybe English football in the Premier League wouldn't be where it is today. I think even Mourinho, how much he hates Arsene Wenger, would also say the same thing. <laughs> you know. But, um, but then it comes down to, like I said, like what's, you know, what, wh who's the best coach? You, Mar Marcelo Bielsa influenced uh, Diego Simeone. Marcelo Bielsa influenced yeah. Pep Guardiola. He also influenced Zinedine Zidane. So is he the best? Because he influenced the greats and yeah, the greats yeah. and went on, you know? So, so it's one of those things like what is really, yeah. what is yeah, really, yeah. It's, it's a very, true, true broad question with broad answers yeah it, it, it could go on for days um all right so we're almost wrapping up yeah. what, what do you think you do differently than other uh coaches or other trainers um well i'm trying to wait find a way to answer that so i don't sound like i'm like being <laughs> or, or like no, no 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 talk your talk, you know? talk your talk yeah i think like um what do I do differently? I'm, uh, I'm honestly like a lot of coaches say that they try to develop players and they say, you know, like, but that's really all I really want to do. That's really all I like doing is, is one of these things. Like I, I, and and I think that we totally um, neglect the importance of being able to have technical ability in regards to like, you know, like uh, when I say, what do I do differently? Coaches look at like, the exercise that I know, but I look at like the, the little details, like the, the, you know, the timing of, 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 of what you do and taking things like how, how is the foot being, uh, being planted when we're making passes and, and things like that, that I, I like, I really enjoy looking at details and, and, and watching the details as I think like the, I just football's all about details and stuff like that. And I think that for me, the development comes down to the small details personally. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I kind of look at, look at football in a more of like a, like a micro uh, micro scale rather than a macro scale. Mm -hmm. And um, that's, a, it's a thing that I think I do a little bit differently. And plus like uh, I try to um, try to take each player as an individual and, just yeah, yeah that's a very difficult question i i feel uncomfortable asking uh, answering that if i'm being honest because mm. that's the, the, you know like what what makes you different what makes you a different person than the, than the next person you know you, you how, how would you really answer that it's not mm. it's a very very difficult uh question to answer i think other people would probably be able to answer that better than i could yeah. because i'm basically in my situation so i can't really say like what i'm doing differently i'm just being myself yeah. And that just happens to be different. Yeah. So. No, no, that's good. Um, yeah. You know, it's been a pleasure. Yeah. We can, we, we can do this for. Surprise. 
Honestly, this, this was probably one of the better conversations I've had in a really long time. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. I really do appreciate you guys reaching out, and um, we can do this again for sure, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we will, we will, we will. Um, we're working on some things. Um, we're we're going to get, like, a, a European connection, you know, a couple of uh, European professional coaches and, and do, like, a panel discussion absolutely man uh, you guys are, you, this, this was really a lot of fun you guys also uh, have a good uh, energy about you and i really enjoyed it so thanks I appreciate definitely it. look forward to doing this in the future thanks a lot man how can yeah. folks how can folks get in touch with you um i i, I try to answer uh messages on on, on instagram mm-hmm. i try um I get a lot of messages that like people, you know, they have that thing on Instagram where it's like you have the messages that are not in the actual inbox and you don't see them. Yeah. yeah. I went through them the other day. I had, honestly, I responded to some, some messages that I got from like two years ago. And I wrote back, <laughs> somebody wrote me back, like, Hey man, uh, something, something, something. And I wrote back like, like, okay, it was a year later. And I was like, Hey, sorry. I didn't see it. And then, so it's one of those things. Like I try, I do my absolute best. Um, yeah. But I try to answer as many uh, uh, as I can on, on, on Insta, but that, that, that's, that's definitely the, the easiest way to, to. All right. Well, what's your what's your Instagram handle? Um, wait, hold on. Tell you, <laughs> wait, hold on. I post. I post. I just I'm not active. I just post. <laughs> um, if you just type in Nate Weiss, you'll find me on Instagram. Okay. And Weiss is W I E S S. W E I S S. W E I S S. All right. Nate N A T E W E I S S. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. All right, man. It's been a pleasure. Pleasure. And, you know, Ple- we'll, we'll... pleasure for me as well. I really appreciate it, man. Have a have a good evening, you guys, and uh you we'll too. You do the same, man. Have a good one. We'll speak. Right. Later, man. Bye.